Reminder to our listeners, today's episode is presented by Spotify, podcasts and music for every mood. Speaking of which, I was down at Rogers Center recently chatting with Toronto Blue Jays closer Ken Giles, and when he's in the mood to get amped up, he gets some classic rock up in him. Led Zeppelin, ACDC, Metallica, and you can find iconic tracks by all three artists on the Spotify playlist, The Workday Rock Classics. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, Giles' coming out of the bullpen song is The Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin. And it begs the question, what would your uh, coming out of the bullpen song be? I was going to ask you to karaoke that, but... I, I anticipated that. Yeah, okay, I'm glad. The preemptive scatting. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you just did it uh, freely <laughs> instead of me having to... Enthu- enthusiastically, that. too. Yes, indeed. So what would your song be? Um, I have a embarrassing and eclectic taste of music. Who so, doesn't? Yeah, I, I, I mean... It's a difficult question for me because, like, um, you know, gr- growing up, I was a better pitcher than a hitter, so I should have the pitching one locked up, but the, the hitting one was always easier for me. But we're sticking to the exercise, what I would enter if I were a pitcher, and I think either set phasers to stun by Taking Back Sunday, which is embarrassing, or All We Love We Leave Behind by Converge, which is, like, a, a great hardcore band that I love quite a bit. Um and you can find both of their music on Spotify. And like the thing I like about Spotify, they do like this This Is playlist and they introduce you to different artists. And uh, both Taking Back Sunday and Converge have This Is playlists where you don't have to like sift through a discography. You can just like hit shuffle and you're listening to that, to that artist. Converge is great if you like hardcore music, but yeah, it's good stuff. Important caveat. Yes, <laughs> yeah. They're a little too hard for some people, I suppose, but they're awesome. But you're a hard dude. I don't think I am. I really, I really don't. You're not. No. That's not an accurate characterization. <laughs> Anyways, uh, pivoting a little bit here, we are nearly one-third of the way into the season, which means, per the law, it's time to freak out about the New York Mets. Uh, things were supposed to be different for the Mets this year after successive fourth-place finishes in the National League East Brody Van Wagen and their new general manager significantly overhauled the roster this offseason to get them back into contention, notably adding Robinson Cano, Edwin Diaz, Wilson Ramos, Jed Lowry, bringing back Juris Familia, uh, and adding those players to a roster that had a strong rotation and some pretty promising up-and-comers. Fast forward a few months, the Mets are currently 23-25 and 25 with a negative 15 run differential. There are whispers that second-year manager Mickey Calloway uh, his job might be in jeopardy, and it's tempting to chalk up their nascent struggles to, well, they're the Mets. They're allergic to success. To me, though, the Mets' mediocre start isn't a continuation of their tradition of failure, though. In fact, I think the alarmism about the Mets' start is somewhat overblown. To be sure, a lot of things have gone awry. Jed Lowry hasn't played a game yet. Wilson Ramos has been bad. Robinson Cano has been bad, and as of this morning, is now on the injured list. And Seems like half their team is on the injured list. Jeff McNeil's gone. Michael Conforto's out with a concussion. Brandon Nimmo's hurt. Uh, but in spite of all that, amidst all that, there have been a lot of positives too, notably the emergence of uh, Pete Alonso, who made the roster uh, out of spring training somewhat unexpectedly and has been a National League Rookie of the Year candidate, if not one of the favorites, uh, the emergence of J.D. Davis, the continued growth of McNeil and Conforto, who have been incredible hitters this year, and so even with all that misfortune that they've navigated early on, the Mets are only two games below 500 and only four and a half games back of the division leading Philadelphia Phillies. I realize I'm liable to get owned for this uh, later on, but I think I still believe in the Mets a little bit. I'm with you 100%. This is, this is a completely different team for all the reasons you listed. This is not an Alderson-run team, and I don't even attribute the failures of the previous regime to Alderson. It seems to be a trickle down from the Will Ponds. The Will Ponds still remain, um, but I do think you know Brody Van Wagenen is is trying to do his best. He extended to Grom in the off season. That's something that you know the Will Ponds would have seemed not willing to do pre uh, Van Wagenen, and just a series of kind of misfortunes have kept them a little bit behind in the race. This is not a disastrous season. Like and we're only, you know, less than a third into the season so far. So, yeah, I, I just, I, 
I can absolutely see this team still winning the division. Yeah. Like there, there's nothing holding them back. And honestly, when everybody's healthy, you know, Jed Lowry has, has not played. He's going to come back. If, if everything, if everybody comes back healthy and Brandon Nimmo plays the way, you know, you and I expect he should be able to play. He was an on-base God the last two seasons. And, you know, part of that is the fact that he, like, he's, he like, loves getting hit by the pitch, loves, loves it, eats it up. Yeah. Um, so that that does kind of scare me away that like if your chief skill set is being hit by pitches then like what's separating you from Brandon Geyer who's like that was his entire job to just get hit by pitches get on base and not really swing but Brandon Nimmo can actually slug too so I don't know like everything is pointing towards this team actually being much much better than their underlying numbers suggest and yeah I can just see them turning it around Yuri's Familia isn't going to be this bad Seth Lugo is going to come back Jacob deGrom isn't going to be a smidge above league average ERA wise the rest of the way Mm -hmm. like his ERA plus is 106 now and he lamented two starts ago that he just can't command the baseball right now and that followed an injury so it's reasonable to presume that he's going to bounce back and be the top five starter in the game that he is Uh, Noah Syndergaard hasn't been exceptional either but his peripherals are much more encouraging than his uh, surface stats there's a lot of talent here and we've actually seen it um, come to fruition in a lot of cases they just haven't been able to sort of put it all together Uh, but the thing is no one's run away with that division either like a, a division that we anticipated would be one of the most compelling in baseball this year has been kind of underwhelming and mediocre like the Nationals have been atrocious. Atlanta hasn't been good. The Mets obviously haven't been good. And Philly's been okay. So they're still right in it as far as I see. And once it all sort of coalesces and the guys that are the centerpieces of their lineup come back healthy, I think they're going to be okay. Yeah, I agree. It's it's dropping three straight to the Marlins that... That hurts. It optically looks horrendous too. Like the the one division rival that you need to make hay against for sure and you dropped three against them. But, like, the Marlins have been a surprisingly good pitching team. Um, not altogether good at, you know, hitting at all. The lineup is terrible, in fact. But, you know, they're going to go on little winning streaks every once in a while. And, you know, the fact that one came against the Mets is causing a little bit of panic. But, yeah, this is this is a completely different team. This isn't the team that, you know ruined Matt Harvey anymore this this isn't the team that you know and I, that's the thing is that like the the tradition of Mets failure seems to be intertwined with mismanagement right and we've seen instances of that over the, over the years notably like them refusing or, or them being unable to get Noah Syndergaard to take an MRI uh, a couple seasons ago when he was feeling discomfort in his arm and then he takes the mound for his next start and tears his lat muscle and then he's toast like that's that's embarrassing and that's emblematic perhaps of a team that doesn't know what it's doing but that's that's not the case here this is just guys getting hurt and you know even looking back at their tradition of a quote-unquote mismanagement like you know, the, the Ioannis Cespedes, Cespedes deal looks bad now, but, like, who expected or anticipated or could have anticipated that his hip would give out and he wouldn't be able to play? Or who could have anticipated that David Wright's body would just stop enabling him to play baseball professionally? Like, it, it's easy to point at these, like, calamitous, say, contracts they've given out or, or these more embarrassing sort of micromanagement uh, mistakes that they've made. But, you know, if, I, I don't know. I feel like it's just easy to pile on the Mets uh, when like a lot of the the misfortune they've they've endured isn't really anyone's fault. It's not because they made bad decisions or were being myopic in their thinking or just did something dumb. It's like you know they they took a shot. They invested in guys who didn't pan out. Um, but it's not like those were unsound investments. Or they, I don't know. It's just like this this narrative continues to compound and like you know, the Robinson Cano saga where like he didn't run out those two ground balls and uh, then proceeds when he does actually hustle out a ground ball, straining his his uh, quad muscle, I think it was. Like that's that's embarrassing and that would seem to contribute to this narrative of like, oh, the Mets just, this is just the Mets. Like they're, they're a joke, but I don't know. It's like maybe they're just profoundly unlucky. Yeah, I, I kind of wanted to talk about that to be honest too because like he didn't run out basically a swinging bunt that barely stayed fair. 
He thought it was foul. Yeah. Yeah. And like, he would have been out anyways. I don't understand the the yelling at a veteran player to hustle down the line on a sure out anyways. I, I don't get it. And then, yeah, it causes him to, to hustle the next time and get injured. So, like, I don't know, man. Like, Well, it, it, people who get furious that, that players, particularly veteran players, don't run out ground balls, like, I, I don't get that at all. It's like Robinson Cano is, is a perennial all-star and a potential Hall of Famer. Like, he knows what he needs to do to stay on the field. He's been one of the most durable players over the last decade and a half. Like, I... I, I can't believe people get upset when he doesn't indulge in some performative hustle to like appease people. Like durability is a skill, you know, staying on the field is a skill and he knows how to do that. And he knows that it's more important that he be in the lineup every day and not require a trip to the injured list than him hustle down the line a little bit harder on a ball where he knows he's going to be out. That just irks me. And like, it, it, it's pretty ubiquitous. Fans hate when players don't run out ground balls. And it's like, they know, you know, that they, they're playing 162 baseball games in like 183 days. It's not imperative that they hustle out this one automatic out ground ball to shortstop so that you think that they're hustling. Agreed. Yeah, I, I agree 100 percent. It's it's one of the most irksome things about baseball fandom that they think they know they could hustle better than players. And like. It just doesn't make any sense to me. It, the one thing that's very difficult about baseball, too, like baseball gets jided a bit for being like in a less athletic sport because you're not constantly moving. But the one thing that's that is quite difficult, I find, about baseball is the going from zero to a hundred as fast as you can, um, on a dime sometimes, and like staying limber for those opportunities is quite difficult, especially as you're getting old and into your like Hall of Fame career like Robinson Cano is. So yeah, I, I'm not just making excuses for the guy. He like has earned the right to not run out sure out sometimes. Yeah, I I'm with you. And I don't know, maybe it was maybe maybe this was like not poetic justice that like he got hurt, but it's like a, an illustrative case of like okay, this is why maybe he knows better than you do. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I I hope Mets fans take it that way to be honest, but I don't think they will. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, at, well, at this point, if you're a Mets fan, like, how do you react when you see things like this? Like, do you do you just sort of laugh it off, or does it does your ire just compound to the point where like you explode and lose your mind? I will admit the the one like all fandom has like their own subsection of Twitter, right? So like, so like, there's Mets Twitter, and I will admit Mets Twitter is by far the most entertaining Twitter that I follow. They're hilarious in how much they think the sky is falling and like how much like they they just love to bring it on themselves too i i love mets twitter and it, it, it's funny too because like yes the mets are lovable losers but like wasn't that long ago that they were in contention in the playoffs going deep into the playoffs they were in the world series in 2015 mm -hmm. that wasn't that long ago yeah and it's i, I would say this team is better yeah, uh, I still can't believe that the Mets and the Royals met in the World Series in 2015. Yeah. Woof. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the combination of of still effective veteran talent that they brought in and the the increasingly impressive crop of young talent that is starting to have success at the major league level, this team looks really good. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. It it is a little puzzling that like their run differential is as bad as it is. Um, just given the some of the performances we've seen offensively, um, but I mean, look, they're they're as a team, their ERA is almost a half run higher than their FIP, right? So you imagine there's going to be some positive regression there, and I don't know, may, may, maybe you and I just drank the Brody Van Wagen and Kool Aid, though. Maybe. Do you think that's possible? It's possible. I I do like new hires in, increasingly. Like the the I always withhold judgment and my benefit of the doubt is always like positive too so like until Brody Van Wagenen does something really stupid that's how long I believe in that person for so like yeah it, it has caused me to get burned many times also if I may heading into the season we the only criticism of the Mets really was how weird their signings were like they increasingly spent on like bats that they 
quote, didn't need, like Jed Lowry, so that they have to play Jeff McNeil in the outfield and stuff like that. And and now the depth is the only thing holding them together. So, like... Yeah, they were, they were playing Rajai Davis and Carlos Gomez last night. And Raj, Rajai Davis hit a three-run homer, too, which yeah. was... What an unbelievable story that was, eh? He, like... Starts taking batting practice in Lehigh Valley, gets the call, hops in an Uber, like a $243 Uber from Pennsylvania to Queens, gets the game in, I don't know what, the fifth inning? Yeah. And comes off the bench and rips a three-run homer off, was it off Sean Doolittle? I don't actually know. I believe it was. I didn't watch the end of the game. I I saw that it was one nothing and was like, nah, I don't think the Mets can do this. (laughs) Yeah. which, Which you should never trust the Nationals bullpen either. The Nationals bullpen is... Hot Dumpster garbage. fire. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, sorry, coming back to your, I'll withhold judgment until he does something stupid. I'm not prepared to call the, the Diaz-Cano deal stupid just yet. I'm really not. But having said that, Jared Kelenic, who was the Come, centerpiece no. that they sent over no, no. Uh, to Seattle, is currently rocking a 944 OPS in the Sally League, which is low A, uh, where he's two and a half years younger on average than his competition. Yeah, terrific. High school hitters are incredibly difficult to come by. <laughs> I no, whatever. Cano and Diaz, yeah, for a high school hitter. I, I still believe I, I I wasn't condemning him. I wasn't vilifying him. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying anything. I'm just. I'm just making an observation. Fair. I'm not advancing a point. I'm not a big Kalanick guy, but I'm also not a big Mariners guy. Yeah. So anything, anybody, the Mariners choose to like i'm like oh that guy's garbage (laughs) (laughs) other than marco gonzalez i do quite like marco gonzalez Mm -hmm. you say kikuchi he's been much better lately too and even even malik smith he's on that team right now right sure why not yeah i do like malik smith edwin encarnacion has been amazing right they they were they were allegedly keen to get rid of him and he's been one of their best hitters yeah but because they were keen to get rid of him they don't get credit for him (laughs) (laughs) uh dan vogelback that's a little bit of vindication no He's been great. Yeah, no. No, no? I'm, a, I'm not buying. So, if the Mets are in this position in two months, uh, not two months, I guess, well, yeah, about two months, um, and the trade deadline is nigh, and they're four and a half games back of, say, either the division or wildcard spot, do you see them adding? I think so. Yeah. I think in in Brody's first year, Ben Wagonen's too hard to say. I'm going to call him Brody. We're on a first-name basis now. Brodmeister. Yeah. Um, in his first year, it feels like it's the right thing to do to at least half-heartedly make a push. And if you miss, then you have carte blanche to sell off your potential, uh, like perennial all-star assets, if not hall of fame assets. Um, but like you do kind of need to make at least a, a perfunctory push for mm-hmm. a postseason spot. In, in my opinion. What, what do you think? Where are you? Yeah, I think so too. And like the, the avenues for upgrading, I feel like, are such that they won't have to give up much to get that improvement that could push them over the hump. Like they just need to improve at the back end of the rotation and in the bullpen. Like the lineup is mostly fine. Like I'm a big believer in this lineup. And that's in spite of the fact that some of their more established names haven't performed that well. Right or rather, perhaps it's because of that because their young stars have have really stepped up. It makes me believe that uh, they can they can do this thing if their veteran stars just perform at you know close to their uh, career norms. But you know they're not going to have to give up a ton to find a starter who is better than Jason Vargas, you know, or to find someone who's better at the back end than uh, Juris Familia has been this year. So yeah, I, I would think so. You got to go for it, like. You've clearly identified this two-year window as your window, right? They brought in Lowry on a two-year deal. They brought in Ramos on one with an option. This is it for them, you know? Like, they're trying to capitalize on Jacob deGrom's prime. He's already 31, I want to say. Noah Syndergaard's going to be gone in a couple of years. The time is now, and, you know, four and a half games is not an insurmountable deficit to make up down the stretch. Um so absolutely, I think they should totally go for it at yeah. the deadline if they're this close. I don't think Nationals fans would say their team's out of it. They're nine back. So I don't know. It's it's just like, I mean, I, w- I would maybe say the Nationals are kind of out of it. But yeah, like there, there's no there's no real out of it this early in the season if you're only 
less than five back. Yeah, no, I totally agree. They should go. They should go for it. And what... Do you think they can still... They can still win the division. I'm not even yeah. posing it as a question. They can still win the division. 